Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dkmartguru.com. Today I'm working in Inkscape to create some brush patterns. I used them in the video before where I created brush effects using the pattern along paths. Seeing Inkscape at this stage does not have a dedicated brush functionality. This is the closest I could work it out to get to a brush effect. To create these patterns, I start with a square document. The dimensions don't really matter. What matters is that you know the width of your design, because the width is something that we need to copy into the preferences. You want the arrow keys to move by the exact same amount as the width of your document. This way it's pretty easy to create seamlessly tiling patterns. This property is important once the pattern is repeated along the paths. I'll quickly show you the principle with just a simple circle. As soon as it touches the edge of the document, it needs to be on the other side of the document as well. So I duplicate it move it with the arrow key and as soon as I have both in place I can move both of them together and they will still match seamlessly. Let's start the first pattern with a simple line created with the pen tool. I prefer to use the pen tool over the pencil tool as it creates less notes and is easier to edit and manipulate. I add a power stroke. This will give the line volume and it's easy to convert to part afterwards because in the end we just need one object made of several sections but it all needs to be one vector shape. I adjust the power stroke to give me a tapered line. For this video I worked with the mouse instead of the graphic tablet. So rather than draw more lines I'll just duplicate this one, give it a slight curve to look a little bit more interesting and here we have the issue that the left side is outside the document so I duplicate it and move it and to be precise we have the setting in the preferences and the arrow key will move it exactly the 500 pixels across to the right. So I duplicate again it's a lot easier than drawing new objects and adjust that for a bit of variation Again, duplicate it to the other side to keep the seamless pattern. I create a few more lines and then duplicate all of those over to the right to continue the seamless pattern. In order to keep the lines as a base for another pattern, I duplicate the layer before combining all of them after converting them to a path and combining them with the path union they are a lot harder to edit. We got a backup in a layer that is turned to invisible. We can see now it's a lot more nodes per line rather than the two before. All of them are one shape now and I create the square that is exactly 500 by 500 pixels as well, which covers the tile and use that to intersect with the pattern. That way the sides on the left and right are being cut off and we just have the seamlessly tiling center bit. Once we have the pattern, we can put it to the test. I create a line with the pen tool and assign a path effect pattern along path to it. Now I select our pattern, copy it and link it to the path. I set the pattern copies to repeat, that way the pattern won't be stretched along the length of our pass, but repeated along the pass. 
thing was rather big. I'm scaling it using the edit on canvas. As I curve the path, the pattern will be adjusted. If I extend the length, there will be more elements of the pattern. The edit on canvas allows not just the scaling, but the modification of every note. So I can curl this pattern. I can put some additional details in, make it look a bit more like a zebra stripe and the line with the pattern on it will be updated right away so I can see exactly how the new pattern looks. Let's create another pattern. I start with a new layer put the line with the pen stroke on and add the power stroke again. I want the tapered look, this time maybe a little more pointy. Again, I duplicate, create the base pattern. This one will be a crisscross pattern. I start with one direction and create a seamless version of that before duplicating and mirroring it. I add some variations so the two sides don't look identical. Each time I edit an object that goes over the edge of my document, I delete the other side and duplicate it again to make sure that the tapered stroke matches. I repeat the process of duplicating the layer to keep the initial design intact and then convert all of the elements to part, combine them with union and then intersect them with the square. This should create a seamless crosshatch pattern. Let's put it to the test. I duplicate the pattern, scale it down to make it easier this time. Create another line that I assign the pattern along paths to and link the pattern to it. Again, it needs to be adjusted to have a fill color and no stroke and to be set to repeat it. For the third pattern, I create a new layer, use the pen tool for a line and add the power stroke again. This time I want to create something that has a more feather-like look so a larger top and a thinner bottom. I flip it and then duplicate those two shapes so they fill the document pretty evenly. This time I won't have to worry about seamless tiling because none of the shapes overlap the edge of the document. I alter them to have a little bit of variation so they don't look all that even. I duplicate the layer again before converting all my lines into paths and then combining them to a single shape via path union. Let's try this one out. I scale it down and create my line and use the pattern along path and assign the leaf pattern to it, set it to repeat and stretched. This way It'll end evenly and fill the whole length of the paths. I set a fill color and no stroke color. I just have to fix the gaps. The tiles, seeing they don't end right on the edge, need a bit of spacing between them so you can manually add that. I created a few more for this video. You don't have to stick to the pen tool and the power stroke. You can also use different shapes. I created two using different size circles and arranging them in a more chaotic or more orderly pattern or triangles or just plain lines with different thicknesses. 
and they do create interesting patterns that might be useful for an illustration like this, which is pretty plain, straight vectors, a few shapes, basically just squares and circles. By adding a grunge effect and the patterns along paths, it gets a whole new feel. With a little bit more planning and forward thinking on what kind of patterns you need for your design, I'm sure you can do way better than this quick sample for this video. Let me quickly show you the outline view of this design. You can see the vector shapes, but you can't see the paths that they actually are bent along. You can convert all of these shapes into vector shapes by converting them object to path and they become fully editable vector shapes. Here are a few designs I created earlier in Affinity Designer with the same principle. Simple lines with power strokes that are then used as a pattern inside the illustration. Even though these were done in Affinity Designer, most of this is quite easily possible in Inkscape as well. I hope you liked this video and it inspired you to play around with this function. The pattern along path is a very powerful tool and definitely worth trying. If you did like this video, please leave a like, subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want to see in the comments below and I will see you again soon.